What's up, Carl Gang? Welcome back to Static. So let's solve this problem. So we're given this T-beam here, and we're trying to find the moment of inertia around the y-axis. So let's go ahead and do it. So I went ahead and simplified this into two shapes. Now the reason I did that is because when you're finding moment of inertia, you want to break down this kind of complicated shape into the most simple shapes possible, which in this case is going to be two rectangles. So rectangle number one on the top and rectangle number two, the vertical one. So we're going to use the parallel axis theorem now that we have two separate um, beams, basically two separate rectangles. We're going to use the parallel axis theorem to combine them together to get one moment of inertia. So let's do it. So let's just go ahead and do the equation. So what we're doing is we're going to use this equation and we're going to add this part up for both rectangles. So i y is equal to, so we get to i bar y prime. So this is basically something you find in the back of the book. It's specific to each shape, so this is the equation for a rectangle moment of inertia. And so I found that in the back of the book. So we're going to do 1 half 12 times, so we're starting with this rectangle, right, number 1. We're going to do the height of the rectangle, 50 millimeters, times the base of the rectangle, 300 millimeters cubed. Now that's just how the equation works. So now that we've done the i bar y prime, you still need to add it to area of distance x for this top rectangle. So we're going to add it to its area. So the area of this rectangle is 300 millimeters times 50 millimeters, right, just base times height. Then distance x. So what is distance x? So distance x is the distance in the x direction from the center of mass of the whole shape to the center of mass of the individual shape. So the center of mass of this shape here is obviously kind of right in the center of the rectangle. Now if we were to find the center of mass of this whole shape, it might be somewhere around here, right? So they both lie on the y-axis, and because we're doing the center of the moment of inertia around the y-axis, we're doing distance x, which means distance this direction. This is distance x. But both of these lie on the same x, you know, they're both at x is equal to zero. So distance x is just going to be equal to zero squared because the distance in the x direction from here to here is zero. They're on the same x axis, basically, or the same, same x, same value of x is what I'm trying to say. All right, so we run through the whole thing for number one, this part. So now we're going to go to number two. So then we're going to add, again, i bar y prime which is going to be 1 12th times this base. So this base is 50, or I mean its height, which is 250, times its base, which is 50 squared, 50 cubed, right? Then we're going to do the same thing. So add its area. So its area is 250 times 50, and then distance in the x direction. So again, this, this rectangle, its center of mass is going to be right here. And the center of masses are all lined up, so the distance in the x going this way is zero. So we can again just put a zero there. And that makes things really easy, because when things line up, you can actually just kind of not even do any of this. This is all the work we had to do, and that's really easy to do. So if you do all this, we're gonna find that IY is equal to 115 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. So you could convert that to meters to the fourth if you want to, but I just kept it millimeters to the fourth. And there's your answer. So it's really that simple. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to check out some more complicated problems with moment of inertia, check out my statics playlist that I put tagged in this video. And yep, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for your support. Peace.